My third point is the most important one, at least from my point of view. I want to make very clear that many, many, many Trump supporters are good, honorable, decent people who support Trump because they are so fed up with politics as usual and they believe that Donald Trump will make America great again. I want to emphasize no problem whatsoever with those people. But Trump also has other supporters and more than any other politician who's currently running or more than any other politician in recent memory Donald Trump and I'm going to use the words of a headline in the Washington Post over a column Donald Trump brings bigots out of hiding and he does it's true he there are people and I get emails from these people and so do you I'm sure Bill they hate Muslims and they hate all Muslims not just the ones who are terrorists they hate Mexicans and not just the ones who are smuggling drugs they hate gays, that's for damn sure. And if you're Jewish and you write about Donald Trump's excesses, they let you know how they feel about Jews. So I would suggest that somebody on this channel, you preferably, say to Mr. Trump, look, you can't be held responsible for all your supporters. That would be unfair and unreasonable. But you do attract people who go way beyond simply being angry. But you go to you attract you people who some that. people think are bigots. Oh. Initially stating he was not a racist and that his words were his own, in USA Today on May 20th, 1991, the Trump states, quote, I have black guys counting my money. I hate it. The only guys I want counting my money are short guys with yarmulkes all day. USA Today, May 20th, 1991. 90% of the immigrants we've been getting since 1970 are from the third world. And every once in a while they will stage again. Boston Marathon, 9-11 attack, Chattanooga shooting, so on and so forth, child rapes by the, by the, the hundreds. Um, all kinds of horrible third world behaviors, sucking our, sucking our welfare system and social security system dry. You can, you can arrive here tom tomorrow and start collecting social security. Um, it would be like saying, um, what's your position on Obamacare? I just think we should enforce it. <laughs> I just want them to follow the law on Obamacare. As long as it's a, an honest-to-goodness legal Obamacare plan, I like it. No, with immigration, we want to rip the wall down. We want to rip down this, the entire edifice of the 1965 Immigration Act. And that is what Trump's policy proposal says, but both for you know, all of you and a small criticism of Cruz, though he is coming along, there's no legal, illegal distinction. Cruz used to say, oh, I want to bring in the same people. I just want them to be No, I don't want the same people. I know your favorite Republican was my guest last night. We are very close to the tipping point, and when you consider that, well, you have the black vote going about 90% generally for in presidential elections for the Democrat. You have the post-1970 immigrant vote going 80% for the Democrat. You have just died in the little Democrats, the crazy lefties, college professors, you know, who knows what percentage that is. So before the first ballot is cast on election day, Democrats are starting with like 40% of the vote. And that's not even talking about their shooting. They're cheating. What we're fighting over is, you know, who knows, 10, 12% of the white vote out there. Um, what fighting over is, you know, who knows, 10, 12% of the white vote out there. That's why I think the only hope for the country is Trump gets elected. But point B, I think Trump may be the only one who can beat Hillary right now, given the demographics. And why is that? Um, Trump will have the largest white vote that we've seen um, probably since maybe ever. Um, that is how we Republicans have had landslides in the past with Nixon. It is by driving the white vote up. It's not by getting some slightly more higher percentage of what will still be a losing percentage of the Hispanic vote or the black vote. Um, you will have, but Republicans, somehow Republicans have been persuaded by the New York Times that white votes are bad. It's a bad George W. Bush got 42% of the Latino vote in 19, in 2000. That's a good thing, isn't it, to get 42% of the Latino but, vote? But um, here's an interesting fact. He got the highest percentage of the uh, Hispanic vote in Texas, his home state. I forget what it was. It may have been over 50%. That's also where he got the lowest percentage of the black vote. He got the lowest percentage of the Hispanic vote in California. It was something like 
5%, 4%. It was some ridiculously low percentage. That's also already got the highest percentage of the black vote. So Donald Trump has pulled this clever jujitsu move on the press. The more they attack him for going after Hispanics, the higher his black vote goes up. I'm not sure I'd like the future of racial politics, but let's, let me ask a question to this. But, but We're in it. That's not the question. What do you think? By the way, I never, I never anticipated that A, Trump would run for office, B, I would be his biggest fan, but he read my book, <laughs> and he's been using my book, Adios America, so I am his biggest fan, because I think that's the biggest issue facing the country. Um, and when you see him in person, if you have Natural born means the moment you're born, you're a citizen, you don't have to apply to anyone, there doesn't have to be an act of Congress, your parents don't say nothing, do nothing, you are an American Truth citizen, natural that's natural born. Citizen. born. So if you're born any place in America or in American territory, to at least one, <laughs> to at one. Least one, one American parent, um, legal, um, you're, you're an American citizen. If you have to apply to the consulate, the American consulate, to, to establish your citizenship, I say you're not natural born. And I want the people to understand Anne is completely 100% wrong. <laughs> uh, and, and in fact, we have been allowing here, here. to the president who have been born outside of the United States to American parents. Two. Two. George Romney, John McCain. Yeah, but he wasn't born to two American parents. He was born to one American parent. But, but that well, makes him the same as the other two. It makes a huge difference because the idea was, I mean, this goes back to when it's it would crazy. take you, um, you know, two years to sail from, from America to England. We had ambassadors over there. We had people visiting. Uh, when you get, so, yeah, if you're just... If you're doing a She's graduate wrong. study program, two American parents happen to be, or, or suddenly a child is born early and is born in in France or England or something, but it's to born to two American parents, yeah, of course, that child is immediately an American citizen. With, there, there isn't a Supreme Court case, and you I say it's completely birth. different because the cases that exist go back to when it took a year to get from here to there. Unbroken practice, but again, I just There is not a single people. case with one, <coughs> with a single American parent. Donald Trump, who's questioned President Obama's birth certificate, now says Cruz should have his eligibility officially validated because he was born in Canada. I would like to see Ted do something where maybe he goes in a preemptive fashion into court to try and get some kind of an order. But this no, summer, Trump dismissed it as a non-issue. I hear that it was checked out by every attorney and every which way, and I understand Ted is in fine shape. I hear that it was checked out by every attorney and every which way, and I understand Ted is in fine shape. I hear that it was checked out by every attorney and every which way, and I understand Ted is in fine shape. Cruz's mother was born in the U.S. and has lived here most of her life. Most legal scholars say that makes him a natural born U.S. citizen under the Constitution and laws passed in 1790 and 1940. This morning he got serious. As a legal matter, the question is quite straightforward and settled law that the child of a U.S. citizen born abroad is a natural born citizen. All right, Carl Garron, live in New Hampshire tonight. Carl, thank you. Well, here's what the Constitution says about presidential eligibility. A person must be a natural born citizen, but it does not define what that means and the U.S. Supreme Court has never ruled on it. Constitutional scholars say it means anyone born to a U.S. citizen anywhere in the world. As we know, Cruz was born in Calgary. His mother was a U.S. citizen when he was born there in 1970. His father was born in Cuba. Cruz released his birth certificate in 2013 and has formally renounced his Canadian citizenship. Several previous candidates have been born outside the U.S. and have encountered similar questions. Birthers, you can stand down because Senator Ted Cruz of Texas released his birth certificate yesterday to confirm that he was born in Calgary, Alberta, but it was to an American mother, making Cruz a United States citizen and, yes, eligible to run for president. I don't think there's any real doubt that Ted Cruz would be a legitimate candidate based on the way uh, the courts have handled this question.
seeing all across Iowa and really all across the country is we're seeing conservatives coming together, conservatives uniting, and that is tremendously encouraging because if conservatives unite, we win. You are up by nine points in the CBS poll in Iowa. You're tied in another poll with Donald Trump. How important is, look at the polls nationally. Trump has led for a significant portion of this campaign. You have come up in the last yeah. month dramatically. How important is you get this, that you get this win in Iowa? Well, listen, what is important is that we continue to unify conservatives. You know, we're, we're not spending a whole lot of time worrying about national polls. Historically, they've been very poor predictors of who the nominee is. You know, you look in prior elections, Rudy Giuliani led the national polls for a year. He won zero states. What matters is who earns the votes on election day. And, and this, this election starts, as it always does, with the first four states, with Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, Nevada. We are all in in all four states. We're all in in Iowa, we're all in in New Hampshire, we're all in in South Carolina, we're all in in Nevada. Now there are a bunch of candidates in this race that have to win Iowa, their campaign is over. There are other candidates that have to win New Hampshire, their campaign is over. We don't view any of the, the, the early states as must win for us, but we are competing hard to try to win every one of them if possible, and I believe we're gonna do well in the first four states, and then 10 days after South Carolina is Super Tuesday, is the so-called SEC primary. It's states like Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas. I think Super Tuesday is gonna be an incredible day for us. With, with the rise in polls comes the hundreds of thousands of dollars now that are against you in negative ads and the criticism from your oh, opponents. Yeah. Uh, Donald Trump, not many evangelicals come from Cuba. Uh, one <laughs> candidate suggested that uh, a, a, if you were elected that in fact it could lead to polygamy, trying to take away your conservative <laughs> credentials. I'm not sure if you heard that, but what is your reaction? And on the, on the campaign trail, are you warning the people of Iowa, telling them, hey, you're going to hear a lot of awful stuff about me? Well, well, listen, just a few weeks ago, almost every candidate in the Republican field was attacking Donald Trump. Today, almost every candidate in the, in the Republican field is attacking me. Um, I, I guess that suggests something has changed in this race. And, and, and I recognize that a lot of the candidates are getting very, very worried. The Washington cartel is panicking. And the reason is very simple. They're panicking because of the men and women in this room. They're panicking because of the men and women across Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina, and Nevada, and across the country. The Washington cartel is panicking because conservatives are uniting. In past elections, what Washington's tried to do is divide and splinter conservatives. And what we're seeing is conservatives are uniting. Now, the next couple of months, we're going to see millions of dollars of false attack ads as the Washington cartel gets more and more terrified. Our focus is going to be don't engage in the mudslinging, don't engage in the games. Just focus on telling the truth with a smile, focusing on my positive, optimistic, conservative vision. We can turn America around if we get back to the free market principles and constitutional liberties that built this country. A number of weeks ago, a New York Times columnist wrote a column saying, anybody but Cruz. And the, and, and the columnist said, please, you can vote for any other Republican, anyone, but Cruz terrifies us. And listen, if you're a big government, New York Times kind of guy, that's right. But my response when the New York Times ran that, 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 that attack column, I simply said, Thank you for the endorsement because the American people are tired of the failed big government policies of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and the New York Times, and we need to bring power back to the people. It, it is interesting to... I can hear you getting a good response. It is interesting, though, to watch the media coverage. For example...